Hello, I'm Dr. Annadale, and our text for today is Chapter 5 of Darwin's On the Origin of Species. This chapter is titled Laws of Variation, and it is about 40 pages long. This chapter falls into roughly two parts. In the first part, Darwin is exploring the effects of different factors on the working of natural selection. So he has sections on the effect of environment or external conditions, the effect of the use or disuse of a particular organ or system by organisms, and the effect of acclimatization or adaptation to the environment, and it's how it fits into the working of natural selection. In the second part of the chapter, Darwin is talking about various observations that have been made about the physical world, and he argues in each case that his theory of natural selection and common descent is adequate to explain the observations that we find in front of us, certainly it's superior as an explanation to the doctrine of special creation, which is a, one of its rivals. So the first observation that Darwin talks about is correlation of growth, and this is the emergence of parallel, uh, the development of parallel but seemingly unrelated structures in the same organism. The second observation uh, that he devotes a section to is uh, that well-developed structures are more variable than less developed structures in similar organisms. Darwin thinks that this is very well explained by the theory of natural selection, but it has to be left unexplained by a theory of special creation. And the third observation that Darwin devotes some space to is that distinct species have analogous variations. That is, although they emerge separately, they seem to be completely distinct from one another, their uh, variation or adaptation to their environment seems to follow on parallel tracks. Now this chapter is the conclusion of Darwin's case for the adequacy of his theory of natural selection to account for the observed facts, the sets of observations about the biological world. So a good question to conclude with is, is the theory of natural selection adequate to explain the observed variation and adaptation that we find in nature. That's all for today. Thanks.